Is God about to change his assignment for you? Will you know how to prepare for this change and how to properly follow the Lord's leading once it's time? Here are four signs that usually mean God is saying you're almost ready for a new assignment. Number one, God will anoint you before he moves you. It's so easy to look at other people in the world around us or to even look at characters in the Bible and to then admire the assignments that God has given them. All we see, however, is where they are now. We don't often see the winding paths that God used to lead them to those positions. And there's one man in the Bible that had a very favorable position, but he had many hurdles and twists and turns to go through before he arrived in this desirable assignment. Who was this man? King David. We use the title king before his name now, but we mustn't forget that when we first meet David in the Bible, he was actually a young shepherd boy. Before God moved David away from the fields of sheep and onto the fields of battle, first he anointed him. Now, you would think that as soon as God anointed David to be king, God would then instantly give him that new assignment. But this is where we're in for a big surprise. Not only did David get anointed before becoming king, but he was anointed to be king and then God left him in the assignment of still shepherding his father's sheep. So just because you have not been given a new assignment yet does not mean you have not already been given a new anointing. David had the same assignment for a while, even though he had already been anointed for a new assignment. This probably occurred because God was still using this old assignment to train David on how to properly use his new anointing. And by anointing, I'm referring to the power of the Holy Spirit that is empowering you to serve him in the unique way he is calling you to do so. If you feel called to lead, you have to start leading from the position of a servant first. If you feel called to be a husband or a wife one day, you have to start living out the qualities of a godly husband or wife even when you are single. If you feel called to preach, you can't wait until you have a pulpit. You have to share biblical truths wherever God opens a door. Therefore, if you crave a new assignment, you you need to start using your new anointing in the assignment you are in right now. Number two, your heart will change before your assignment changes. Now we need to notice where David's anointing took place. It took place in the presence of a sacrifice. I believe this is a foreshadowing of how the sacrifice of Christ is the sole reason God blesses any of us with an anointing to do his work. We all fall into the trap that Samuel fell into. When he saw David's older brother, he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But God said, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Likewise, you may feel like God will never anoint you for a mighty assignment because you don't feel you are worthy. And the truth is, you're not worthy. None of us are. David wasn't worthy either. He was the youngest in his family, thus the least worthy to be chosen as king. And yet God chose him because his heart was right. And through the sacrifice of Jesus and the crucifixion of our flesh, God can make our hearts right too. You may not be the best looking, the smartest, the most eloquent, or the wealthiest, but none of that matters in God's economy. As Paul said of himself, in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 10. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. And I wanted to take a moment here to ask for your help. My goal for this channel is to reach as many people as possible with God's truth, but I can't do that without you. God is sovereign, but I believe he uses the algorithm to reach the people he wants to reach here on YouTube. When you tap the like button on this video, that signals to the YouTube algorithm that you think this is a good video. It then spreads this video to other people who also need to hear it. So every time you like an AGW video, you are helping God's word spread. I really appreciate your partnership in spreading God's word. Number three, you will need to do a bit of both before you fully get your new assignment. First Samuel 1715 states, David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth 
from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. That's a very important phrase to me. David went back and forth. Most people never get past the mere dream of a new assignment because they are unwilling to have more than one assignment at a time. Many want to be a musician, and so they quit their day job and give it a shot. But then when the money runs out and they need a new day job, they assume they are not called to be a musician. Many want to get married, but when one dating relationship doesn't work out, they assume this means no relationship will ever work out for them, then they quietly resign to a life of unwanted singleness. Many want to be promoted at their place of employment, but when their boss asks them to do extra work in their current assignment, they say no or they do it begrudgingly. But again, what did David do before he could fully move on from being a shepherd? He had to fulfill multiple roles before he could fully leave the one behind. And number four, God will give you the courage to seize your new assignment even when it looks foolish to others. When David left that final morning before his assignment changed, there's no indication that he knew his life was about to be altered forever. It simply states, And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper. He was being dutiful and responsible. He left the sheep in someone else's care, making sure his current assignment was not being neglected for his future assignment. But then when that moment came and God put it on David's heart to make the jump from shepherd to full-time warrior, notice how instantly David made this jump. He said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. It's comical to me when I think about David's statement to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. Well, when did you used to keep sheep, David? Oh, just this past morning? But David had already switched his mindset. He knew his assignment was changing. As he saw Goliath taunting God's people, the Holy Spirit prompted David to act even though it looked like madness to everyone else. Notice too that God led David to use what he had already learned rather than adapting to a new strategy. Saul wanted him to wear armor and take a sword, but at this point in David's journey, God had trained David in a different way. One day, David would pick up the armor and the sword. But now God had only taught him how to trust him with the staff and rock. This is another example of how God's changes in our lives happen over time and not all at once. It's often a process. If you're being faithful in the process of sanctification, this means you're growing. And if you keep growing, oftentimes God gives you a new assignment so he can continue to use you in greater and greater ways, just like he did throughout David's life. I pray that this content was a blessing to you on your journey with the Lord. I'm Mark, and I'll see you at the next video.